Today's episode of The Bitcoin Show is brought to you by usgoldcoins.com, 1-800-HOT-COIN, and Meze Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com, and Tradehill.com, and mtgox.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Bitcoin Show. This is The Bitcoin Show, episode 30. As you know, I'm Bruce Wagner. This is Manny Mena. And we are bringing to you some uh, another really cool Bitcoin startup that is going to change everything. Another game changer. Every day, there's another game changer. You know, it's just, <laughs> just another day. Actually, it's two or three times a day, actually, in some, some cases. Today, we're going to actually do like three Bitcoin shows. Two in English and one in Spanish because we have breaking news that's going to just take too much time. We didn't want to interfere with this topic, so we're going to actually do two shows today in English and one in Spanish. Oh, oh my gosh. And then other shows too. Android Invasion in Spanish. Just so many things happening at Only One TV. But today, um, our guests are visiting us remotely via Skype, of course, the magic of the internet. Um, Tony Gallippi and Stephen Pear from, is it Stephen or Stefan? Stephen or Stefan, pair, <laughs> from BitPay. And I'm going to say it's bit-pay.com because there's a hyphen in there. Make sure you get it right or else you're going to go to the wrong place. It's bit, B-I-T, dash, P-A-Y.com, BitPay. So, Tony and Stephen, welcome. Ah, uh, glad to be here, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having us, Bruce. Sure. Is it Stephen or Stefan? Glad to be on the famous, the Bitcoin show. The famous... <laughs> Yes, well, the internet, you know, we're all famous. You broadcast yourself like YouTube. So <laughs> everyone can be a star on YouTube. So um, tell me, you guys, okay, so Tony, you're in um, uh, Orlando? That is correct. I'm in Orlando, Florida. Okay, and Stephen, you're in Atlanta. Yep. Atlanta. Just down the road. And, it's, and, and Bit Dash Pay is an Atlanta company because we're doing Atlanta Week, right? Uh, well, we're in both, yes. You're in both. Oh, okay. So you're, you're <laughs> by cities. Okay, so the because um, we're t we're kind of talking about uh, this week being Atlanta Bitcoin Week because uh, there are a lot of startups. Atlanta is just another little hotbed of Bitcoin activity. You know, uh, New York's got a little bit, and the West Coast has some, and it's all over. Everybody's competing in a, in a you know positive, healthy way uh, to see who can come up with the most innovative, awesome, awesomeness. And they're all coming, by the way, they're all coming to New York and converging on New York for the Bitcoin World or Bitcoin Conference and World Expo 2011 NYC, uh, which is happening um, August 19th to the 21st. Sorry about that. 19th to the 21st of August. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit in the context of this. So tell us what Bit-Pay is. Uh, well, at BitPay, we are a merchant solution, so we can allow uh, companies and websites to accept Bitcoins uh, directly on their website. So our philosophy is that you know merchants can do the best job of presenting their products, selling their products better than anyone else can. Um, so most businesses, they already have a website. Um, they may already have a shopping cart. Um, so we allow the merchants to keep control of the shopper all the way through the sales process up until the point of payment. And at the point of payment, if the shopper wants to pay with Bitcoins, um, that's where they click over to us. Uh, we actually only have one click on our website that we need to have them click to process the payment. Um, and then once the payment is received, we give them a second click, which is just a link back to the merchant website. So we can completely automate uh, the receiving end of a Bitcoin payment in only two clicks. Okay, so I'm familiar with, uh, I'm not familiar with much, but I am familiar a little bit with Google Checkout and PayPal checkout, is it sort of the same thing or just a little bit uh, different? Yeah, so if you've used either of those, um, it would be the same. You know, if you already have a website uh, with a shopping cart, you know, you fill out the shopping cart, it figures out what the shipping, what the tax is, and, and it comes up with a total amount due. Um, at that point, you can either, you know, pay directly to the merchant with a credit card, you can pay with uh, Google checkout, you can check out with PayPal. Um, but again, a lot of those do the same thing. In order to, if you want to pay with bitcoins, um, you don't have a way to do that right now that's automated. You have to email the merchant, 
<clears throat> they have to get back to you, you know, with some type of, right. uh, of an invoice and an amount due, and based on the time it takes you to pay them, the rate may lo no longer be valid. So there's a lot of, um, you know, the, the, the Bitcoin process right now is very manual. It's manual um, and cumbersome. It's very clunky. And, yeah. you know, we decided that it needed to be automated, and so that's right. what we went out and did. Is there yeah, Bitcoin any... doesn't, I'm sorry, <laughs> I was going to say Bitcoin is far too high tech and advanced to be so manual and clumsy and, and uh, yeah. you know, yeah. cumbersome. Our, our objective was just to make it as easy as possible for a merchant to get set up with accepting Bitcoins. And, Actually, you know, to literally be able to do that in like two minutes, you know. Absolutely. Is there any specific shopping cart integration? Uh, we're working on that. That's part of our plans. We built a basic shopping cart right out of the box. Um, but when, when people expand and they need more advanced features, we don't want to build a whole other shopping cart technology. There's a bazillion of them out there uh, on, that we want to be able to refer our merchants to and then, in a, and then have BitPay integrate directly with them. Okay, so uh, once again, I'm, I'll play the novice because I am. <laughs> uh, so when... Uh, so just so I understand, um, the shopping cart and the checkout are not necessarily the same thing. They're different, right? Yeah. So they yeah, usually so are the really, di different things. Yeah, there are really two different uh, things you might want to do. You might want to have a shopping cart technology on your own website, on your merchant website, and you manage the whole shopping cart experience yourself. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes time to actually check out, then you send bit pay or bit dash pay. Uh, you know, and a total and some kind of order reference number, and then we present the uh, the customer with uh, an invoice, and they use their Bitcoin client, whichever one they might be using. They complete the payment, and then we call back, dial back the merchant server, and let them know, or just send them an email, whatever they want, and, and let them know that the payment has been completed. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just looking for a really basic overview at this point because, uh, so that we understand what we're talking about, for, so that the audience understands too and, and me. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the, in general, okay, without getting into Bit, BitPay, um, in general, a website that sells things has a shopping cart component and a checkout component, usually not necessarily the same thing, usually not the same thing. So the, like the website itself might have its own shopping cart mechanism and it just spews data to a checkout, like Google Checkout or PayPal Checkout and all that. That's generally how it's done, right? Yeah, usually it's like a module or they cater to specific integration for that or mm -hmm. even sometimes like PayPal or Google will reach out to them and provide you know some sort of integration solution for that okay so if I have it now let's say I already have a website and I already have stuff on there for sale and I'm already using say Google checkout how can BitPay uh, how can I integrate that would it would it have to be like two different checkout buttons and so basically the shopping cart if I already have a shopping cart component in my site it, I can check out through either one of two buttons if you're using only Google checkout um, that's not a shopping cart, you know, like solution. Mm -hmm. So it would be two separate buttons. But if you do use a shopping cart solution, BitPay is planning to offer, you know, integration for that. So say, for example, you could choose PayPal, credit card, and then BitPay. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, correct. That's generally it. Yeah, and, and we, we do have our own shopping cart as well on BitPay. Uh, but, so they have but we wanted to make it featureful enough that people could make use of it if they wanted to get started right away accepting bitcoins mm -hmm. and, 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 and they had some products they wanted to sell. But our intention is not to build, you know, a, a complete, you know, completely feature rich. I mean, there, there are companies that charge substantial amounts of money for really, uh, you know, advanced shopping cart uh, okay. solutions and we just don't want right. to get into that part of it. So you have a simple shopping cart option if you, if you don't have a shopping cart already. But, but no, wait, when I, I think I'm still confused. So let me, let me ask you this. If I already have, let's say I already have a sophisticated shopping cart system yep. and I already have, uh, you know, PayPal or Google checkout mm -hmm. and I, I want to keep that because I, I say I still want to accept MasterCard, Visa, PayPal and all that stuff but I want to add Bitcoin, then it's a simple matter of just uh, check out with Google Checkout or check out with uh, BitPay. I have the option of checking out with either one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, right. yeah. Okay. So on, on our website, you would use the feature we have called a hosted checkout. Okay. So that assumes that you already you know, came up with a total amount, you've already calculated the tax shipping, whatever you need to do, mm -hmm. and all we're doing is processing the payment for you. Okay. Um, so that's the same thing that PayPal or Google would do. Um, but if the customer wants to pay in bitcoins, now you can give them another option. 
uh, right. they can check out you know with bitcoins and and you know pay for the purchase that they that they just selected um, by using BitPay. All right. So now let's say um, a, a, a for me a realistic example is I have a website. It's called onlyonetv.com, and I want to sell. I've never sold products there before, but I want to sell uh, some kind of slick coffee mug that says "The Bitcoin Show," and some Only One TV T-shirts and only you know whatever stuff like that. Now I don't have a shopping cart, but I do know how to plug in a widget. I think so. Uh, in that case, you guys have a, an alt. You have you have a, a basic, uh, a bare bones kind of shopping cart already that I can use, and that's what you're saying. Yeah, and, and that's that's not something that you have to embed on your website. All we do is we give you a widget for every item that you sell. Maybe you sell like five or six different coffee mugs, t-shirts, oh. and it's not worth your time to build a whole shopping cart on your website. Mm -hmm. You just want to put a widget next to each individual item that you sell and allow people to pay for it with bitcoins. Oh, okay. um, so that's where you would use our, our shopping cart on BitPay and that each item that they click on you know, would be added to a shopping cart you know, on mm. our site. Okay, um, and then they can check out uh, through BitPay. Oh, and that's with Bitcoin. slick. So I mean, it's so simple. So I can that way. Uh, if each item is a widget, and the shopping yes. cart's all done by you guys, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in this basic <laughs> format. I mean, I'm not very sophisticated. I yeah. just I just want to have a coffee mug and a T-shirt. That's it. And so yeah, um, no. all, I just have a, a widget for each of one or two or three or whatever however many items, and I can actually rearrange the widgets any way I want, and uh, you know, basically present it any way I want. Not only that, but you can print out a QR code for each item. And oh, if you've got a physical neat. store, you can put a little QR code next to each item in your store, and people can scan it with their phone, and you know, it'll pull up and put it into the shopping cart on your, you know, on your phone. You've got to have a, the, a phone that's connected to the web, of course. But. That's okay, pretty awesome. awesome. Okay, this is so you could generate a QR code for each individual item. Mm -hmm. This way you keep track of physical inventory, or at least pricing for physical inventory. All right, yeah. so... That's um, pretty awesome. Okay, so let me make So imagine Mezzy Grill. Yeah. Where Mezzy Grill, for whatever reason, they have a the Bitcoin platter, right? And it's <laughs> two Bitcoin. And it's for two people or whatever. So you can have a QR code that's just for this one Bitcoin platter, and then mm -hmm. you could have his general QR code where he would do the custom however he does it now. Okay, so yeah, but they, let me make they sure. can also you can also set the price either in Bitcoins or in dollars. So they could actually put whatever dollar price they want on it and then you know, we'll figure out the exchange rate based on. Oh, the oh okay. And you guys, do, okay. All right. So now this is just getting more and more cool. So let's say I have a Mezzi Grill has a pre. I mean, I don't. They don't. I mean, just some anybody, some merchant that has prepared sandwiches like a Seven Eleven. Say, mm -hmm. okay, they've got all these rip, these prepared sandwiches and drinks and stuff like that. So they could actually slap a QR code sticker on each prepared sandwich, and then with my app would it be just a regular bar, a QR code scanner app or they would have to spe have a special BitPay app no, no just I mean, a regular just a re regular QR scanner app so it's, and then it takes them to their you know that it's just a URL that takes them to the to the BitPay shopping cart adds it oh. to their shopping cart oh so they scan it, it and they hit open as a URL <laughs> it takes them to the web page which is the shopping cart on their smartphone and then they just every time they scan something it adds it to their shopping cart now, how does it know it's me how is it identifying me your browser, uh, we I use imagine. you know cookies. Uh, we attach a shopping cart to your browser's cookie. Oh, so if I want to buy cookies, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> cookies with my sandwich. I get a combo. All right, so it, it knows I'm me. All right, cool. So I can scan all the sandwiches I want, mm -hmm. and then yep. I can literally hit checkout on my phone. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then it then I can then what then what happens? It gives me a Bitcoin address. Yeah, so then, then you get taken to the checkout screen, you get presented with a final Bitcoin amount, oh and then you gosh. simply use your Bitcoin application, whatever that may be, on your phone or you know, a, a hosted you know, uh, wallet. You complete the transaction, uh, the, then, then the invoice turns into a receipt. So now you have a receipt that shows all the items on there that, that you bought, and then uh, there's a QR code on the receipt as well. So here, here's where it gets really kind of cool. Um, We've started prototyping on a, uh, a, a phone, an optimized a, a checkout or a receipt that's optimized for a phone. And so you can view the receipt on the phone, and on the phone it'll have a QR code. So you could show that actually to the merchant, and they could scan it with their uh, QR scanner or their phone, and they could pull the receipt up themselves. And since they're the merchant, they can also do things like click that they fulfilled that um, 
you know, that order. whatever it is you're buying. So somebody could come into a restaurant, scan all the items on their menu, go ahead and complete the, the purchase with their Bitcoin client, and then they could just hold up the phone with the QR code on it with the receipt, and then, you know, the, the uh, merchant or the, you know, the restaurant owner could then scan that and then see that, yeah, you purchased, you, you completed that, you purchased it, and now the merchant needs to give you whatever well, it is you bought. I feel a little misled here because I thought this was just a widget for online stores. This is like a point of sale system. Tell me, like you, you, could, you could do anything with this. So let me get this straight. And th there's no special software. All you need is anything with a browser and a QR code scanner, which is basically every phone everybody has. And yeah. so, all right, let me, tell me if I'm wrong. Could I not have a restaurant, like uh, a restaurant we're going to be visiting tonight, who's going to be the second <laughs> restaurant in Manhattan to accept Bitcoin? Actually, I already, did I already announce it? No, I didn't. Anyway, I we're going gonna to film doing, we're going to film setting them up to accept Bitcoin later tonight. Anyway, I have a nice restaurant, right? And on the menu, I've got every item and the description and the price, and I could put a little QR code next to every item on the actual printed menu, mm -hmm. yeah, and I could yeah. sit there and order with my phone without a waiter or a waitress. Just go beep, beep, right. two of these, one of these, and then when I'm done, I hit check out, and then when the server comes, I show them my QR code, and the server can scan it, and that's after I pay. Well, I have to, I have to say check out, and I pay with my Bitcoin. And then, I, then it creates a QR code, and the server could come with his or her phone, scan it, and my order is placed and already paid for. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and Bruce, here's another thing you could do. You know, a lot of restaurants and places are allowing you to order online and then go to the store to pick it up. Right. So you could do the same thing. You can shop you know, online on the menu where, you can, you know, where the merchant can embed a little bit more features and options. Again, you go through the entire shopping cart. Once you get the receipt, it has the, the QR code on it. You have the receipt on your phone. Then you just go to the store. You present the receipt, and they've already have your order there waiting for you. And uh, they just identify you. They pick it up, and then they, they can mark it as being filled. So you could also actually... <laughs> It gets better and better. So you could do this with a printed menu, but you could also come in with your iPad. Well, not iPad, but you know, Android. When I say ad iPad, of course, you know I mean open source Android <laughs> Linux. You know, of course. We iPad in the generic non-Apple sense. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> you could you could have any kind of a tablet or a netbook or a notebook and bring up the menu and order it online. You could, the, the server could actually even bring you a tablet, and that's the menu, and you could order it. If you, as long as you have a smartphone to, to be able to pay. But the, the, sure. in other words, the menu could be electronic, it could be handed to you as a tablet, mm -hmm. or it could be just ordering online for pickup yeah. or delivery, or it could be a printed menu that I can scan. But mm -hmm. either way, they're, they're all completely integrated. It's one system. Yeah, I've seen where I used to work, we could order from a Chinese restaurant online, and they, they would deliver to you, or you could do pickup. That would be a great example of somebody who could really use that if they wanted to yeah. accept big oh, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of a lot of websites now order online. I mean, you can you can order pizza online and have yeah. it delivered to you. You can order Chipotle. Or I, you know, any restaurant you know is starting Everything. to allow you to do that now. And then you just show up with the receipt, and they have your order waiting for you, so you don't have to wait when you get to the store. Yeah, here in New York, um, we have. I mean, we know. Yeah. I mean, first of all, they if you live in Manhattan, they slide three menus under your door, no matter where you live, every day. And people <laughs> in here know that. I mean, even Seinfeld <laughs> talked about that. And but but we have other things too, like Delivery.com, where you literally go there, and there's hundreds of thousands of restaurants with their menus right there, and you just click, 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 order. You pay nothing actually, and you pay cash on delivery. But um, this would absolutely work for anything, any any restaurant. I mean, basically everything in Manhattan delivers. So yeah. it, it's interesting how we created this. We started working with one merchant that wanted to sell event tickets. Basically, they they were you know it was you know they wanted to use our system to you know allow people to buy uh, you know tickets to an event and then be able to show up and and you know keep track of who actually had uh, paid and and so they could just show that QR code. Well, and thank then, uh, thank God for yeah. them. And uh, how many confirmations are you guys waiting for before you mark it as paid? We we leave that to the merchant. Uh, we've got three options. You can uh, select you want high speed, uh, medium speed, or slow speed. And the high speed sends the merchant the notification immediately when the the payment's received. Uh, so it's uh, it's really up to the merchant. Now, if if we detect it for one reason or another, a double spend or or whatnot, then. Uh, mm -hmm. You know that that will get that they won't get credited. We don't credit the merchant's account until we've seen six confirmations. But 
you know, I mean, we, we've studied this topic a lot, and we, we actually believe that it's not, uh, uh, there's not a big issue, or there's not, they're not issues that aren't solvable in terms of being able to really accept almost everything almost yeah. instantly. I mean, it, it um, depends a little bit if you're selling hot dogs or Mercedes, you know. <laughs> Yeah, right. It, yeah, exactly. If you're if you're actually going to be physically shipping some merchandise, you know, then you can choose the the low speed setting and mm. and you know it waits for six block confirmations before it notifies you. The so, only difference um, the is the high speed is more for you know internet transaction, music, yeah. movies, downloads, stuff where you need to give people access right away without making making them wait. Or Starbucks where there's a long line, people are waiting for the food. <laughs> So yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, basically, there's no difference. It's just how soon do you want to be notified? The the transactions all go through at the same speed. It's just how long do you want to be notified before for for safety security reasons, I guess, to make sure. Yeah, there's a web there's, there's a website uh, called transactionradar.com. I don't know if uh, actually <laughs> I don't even know if that's been announced or or talked about in the public forums or not. But it is it's an now. interesting website nonetheless. <laughs> I hope I'm not letting the cat out of the bag, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it lets you monitor, you know, how quickly transactions are propagating through the network, and you can, you know, I've run some tests on awesome. there, and I mean, within seconds, you see, you know, 80 to 90 uh, uh, notices of a particular transaction coming from different nodes in the network, mm -hmm. and you would have to go to great lengths to try and uh, yeah. really execute a double spend under those kind of conditions, and yeah. buying something at a coffee shop or, you know, a dinner or lunch, uh, it's not an issue, really. I mean, it, it, yeah. the kind of effort you would have to go exactly. through to make for for a couple bucks, it wouldn't be worth it, of course. So, all right, yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's definitely true. I know we've done t little tests, you know, like when we're in proxim physical proximity and we send each other bitcoins, and it's like three seconds. I mean, and I know, like at Mezzi Grill, when I do it there, literally by the time I turn around from the cash register and get to the fountain drinks, he's already said, "Bing, I got the email." I know that's because it's through right. my Bitcoin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh yeah, yeah. That of course that's centralized, but but still, it's um, you know, it's not always. I mean, even that there's there it, even if it's on one centralized service, they also have different nodes, so it may or may not be internal. It may actually go out to the network. Yes, but sure. even you know, even through the tip, the standard Bitcoin client, we see it show up within three three point three seconds or something. We did it with a stopwatch. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually, in my experience, for whatever reason, um, most of my Bitcoins have like a couple thousand confirmations on them. But when mm -hmm. I send them out. Usually takes 10, 15 minutes in my experience. Mm, okay. But so, I've never needed to use it like urgently, so mm -hmm. it's never been a problem. Okay. Uh, that's odd. Like, I mean, because uh, you know, pretty much all of our testing, uh, you know, yeah. things happen pretty instantly. When I use an exchanger, he mm -hmm. said it was odd as well. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Most of your connections. <laughs> hmm. Well, yeah. I, I've got I've got a whole lot of questions, and I also want to actually do it. I want to demonstrate this because I have sure. something to sell. And I'm going to tell you about that. Uh, besides the sponsors, but I got to—we got to thank our sponsors because without them, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here to tell you anything. So let's take a really quick, brief, brief second and uh, and thank these guys. Um, U.S. Gold Coins, usgoldcoins.com is Andy Gauss. Andy Gauss is my monetary guru. We uh, turn to him for all things money. Um, I'm, I'm very, very honored to say I'm the one who introduced him to Bitcoin, but he's all about Bitcoin now too. But he's, he's a monetary historian and a, a, you know, really a money expert, and he's the host of a show called Real World of Money, um, uh, radio show Wednesdays and Saturdays, which he's bringing to only one TV. Andy Gauss and Patrick Tempone co-host this show called Real World of Money. Anyway, that's going to be awesome. Every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Meanwhile... We were huge fans of his radio show. We became customers of his in his company, usgoldcoins.com, because he sells, as investments, rare U.S. gold and silver coins. It's called numismatic, which just means rare, valuable because it's rare, U.S. gold and silver coins, which are an excellent investment. They're better than buying gold and silver by itself because it holds the value two ways. One, because it's just rare. It's a collector's item, so it has value there and as a metal. And if people, like if the price of gold or silver were to soar at any given time and people were to melt these co uh, coins down for the, m the metal value, well, that just makes your rare coin even more rare. So it really holds the value in two ways. It's brilliant. Um, next best thing to Bitcoin. <laughs> so anyway, he's absolutely trustworthy and I vouch for him um, without question. Our trusted advisor for investments in rare gold and silver coins. 
Andy Gauss, and he's totally accessible. If you're in the US, it's so easy, just 1-800-HOT-COIN. How can you forget that? If you try, you can't forget that number, 1-800-HOT-COIN. If you're not in the US, just go to usgoldcoins with an S dot com and check out uh, US Gold Coins and just ask for Andy, he, they're awesome. Okay, and Mezzy Grill, Mezzy Grill, um, you know, we can't stop talking about Mezzy Grill. It's M-E-Z-E grill.com. Just look at their menu and you'll be amazed. They, they have authentic Mediterranean food, um, wonderful as organic and locally grown, sustainable, all that stuff is possible. Anthony Anderson, you know, is all about green living and all that and they talk endlessly, Marwan, and, uh, who owns Mezzy Grill with Anthony Anderson, about these things, how to get you know, the best quality ingredients and always improving on that but it's absolutely delicious. The best hummus in, in New York City, I, I believe. And they're now serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Of course, they're only a couple blocks south of Columbus Circle, so if you live here, you know where that is. If you're traveling through, of course, you're gonna recognize that scene, Columbus Circle, in all the movies. So every tourist goes to Columbus Circle. And remember, when you see Columbus Circle, or even Times Square, you're just a few blocks away from Mezzy Grill. They're at the corner of 8th Avenue and 55th Street. Their claim to fame is two now, twofold. One, they're the first restaurant in the world, to our knowledge, that accepts Bitcoin, brick and mortar restaurant. Second, they're the first uh, uh, retailer, brick and mortar retailer, at least in New York, uh, maybe the world, we're not sure yet, we, we put that claim out there, uh, maybe in the world, um, to actually buy and sell Bitcoin. So not only can you go there and buy your breakfast, lunch, and dinner with Bitcoin, you can actually go there and buy $500 worth of Bitcoin. Or if you have Bitcoin, you can go there and sell $500 worth of Bitcoin. They have a, um, they've announced a, a, a daily limit of $500 per person, 6% uh, fee on buying or selling, and the rate is uh, currently the Mt. Gox last price, and those things are not negotiable, so don't even bother emailing them and asking them for a better deal. It's not gonna happen. It's not negotiable. But they're there, and they're open seven days a week, so whenever they're open, you can go there and buy and sell Bitcoins while you're having lunch, dinner, or breakfast, and um, stop in and see Marwan. All right, and tradehill.com. This is how you buy and sell Bitcoins without even leaving the comfort of your easy chair. Uh, you can just do it online. So if you're cool with using um, bank wire transfer, Dwala, all the other ways that you can get money directly into an online exchange site, tradehill.com is there for you. They have so many different ways to get their money in and out. They now deal directly with the euro. They have their own euro market. You don't have to convert it to US dollars if you're in Europe or you know if you have euros. And um, they, you get 10% off your trade fees for life with our referral code on the screen there, TH-R141. Um, you refer other people and you get commission on all of their trades. Uh, they, they try and make buying and selling Bitcoins as fast, cheap, easy, painless as possible. Tradehill.com. Thank them. When you contact them, be sure and thank them for sponsoring Only One TV and The Bitcoin Show. And Mt. Gox. <laughs> Mt. Gox is a big player in, the, in this league. MTGOX.com. is We call it Mt. Gox. Some people call it MT Gox. But it's mtgox.com. Who doesn't know about it? Mt. Gox has a you know a vast majority of market share. They've been around the longest of the, the big exchanges, and they have uh, two-factor authentication with this physical YubiKey, which is uh, they're very proud of in emphasizing their security and, and with their relaunch. And they're very resilient. No matter what happens to them, they just keep coming back like the Duracell bunny. They're always here. Uh, they don't hide from the cameras. They're, they come and do interviews, and so we see them face to face. They are taking euros, Great Britain pounds, you know, the British pound, and Australian dollars, uh, Canadian dollars, I, I think, or they said coming any day soon. They might already be taking Canadian dollars. They still have uh, trade fees of only 0.3% now through August 9th. So um, we thank Mt. Gox for uh, sponsoring the Bitcoin show. And when you contact these guys, and you will, uh, like I said, you know, obviously patronize them, but um, you know, we we stand behind these guys, and um, they stand behind us. We really appreciate their patronage um, and their support of the Bitcoin Show on Only One TV. So, all right. So Tony, you're yes. there. Looks like we've lost Steven's video again. <laughs> uh oh. He'll be working on that. But meanwhile, we can we can continue while they while they yep. work on reconnecting that. Skype, you know, the internet, what are you going to do? So, <laughs> it's kind of like cell yeah, phones. I, um, uh, yeah, Bruce, oh, you're still I, there. You can hear us. Okay, that's camera. cool. That's cool. I've got my camera on, but I don't know why. Oh, not. We can't see your pretty face right now, but it's all right. We can hear you. Um, nope. So, <laughs> 
But uh, so that it's kind of like cell phones. Remember when phones used to be rock solid and reliable because they were wired? And now we're just used to getting cut off constantly because of all this high tech cell phone stuff. But anyway, I want to, um, Ed, why don't you switch over to, to my laptop and let's, let's walk, I want you to walk me through um, as if I'm a customer. Why? Because I am a customer. I have some stuff yeah. I want to sell on this website. And what okay. it is, is the Bitcoin Conference and World Expo. We want to sell tickets. Uh, for admission and uh, vendor tables and things like that. All right, so sure. I, I created an, you created me an account or I created an account, verified yeah. it with an email link like everything else, and then you approved it. So now, you, if you see, can you see that very well? Up at the top right corner, there's my email address. That means I'm logged in, I already logged in. There you are, you're back. So um, tell me what am I looking at? I, I, when I click over here on the left side, Merchant Tools, I'm looking at Merchant Tools Overview, the third one down. So that's yeah, what I let's see. Yeah, start there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, because this kind of gives people a, more of a clear understanding of the two different types of software that we can offer. Um, again, whether you have a shopping cart on your website or you don't. Mm -hmm. um, so the column down the left is going to be a little bit easier for, for anybody that just wants to sell something on their website, whether it's t-shirts or coffee mugs or an event tickets, mm -hmm. um, and they don't want the hassle of, of building their own shopping cart on their website. Um, That's you know, me. So, so down the left-hand side, you can kind of see the flow from top to bottom about, you know, what information that they would collect, what information we would collect, and then how the, the payment notifications go back and forth. Okay. Now, on the right-hand side is if your website is a little bit more sophisticated and you have a shopping cart where you collect the, the buyer's name and address and email and whatever you want to collect, and really all you're sending us is a total amount that you want to process. So we can do a lot more automation and server-to-server -server communication with the hosted checkout down the right side. Mm -hmm. uh, but the easier one to set up you know, for, for any merchant really is, is the one down the left. So okay. um, since you just want to sell event tickets and you want to put them up on your website, I, I think we stick with the easy way and, and we go down the left side okay. um, you know, for the catalog item. So if you look at the bottom, there should be a link where it says uh, to create a button. Right? Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. And so for those of us join, I mean those of you joining us late, that we're looking at Bish, uh, Bish bit dash pay <laughs> is I'm running a bit b i t hyphen p a y dot com bit dash pay dot com is otherwise known as bit pay and I'm on the uh, under merchant I got an account I created it under merchant uh, tools overview there are two columns on the right there uh, does the merchant have a shopping cart yes or no I mean it's, that's I love it it's so simple no I don't have a shopping cart so I'm going to go down the left side catalog items. Uh, merchant website, BitPay, uh, okay, this is just telling me all the, the um, features of this setup, and I don't have to do anything, it's super simple, and at the bottom, I've simply got create one, an item button, uh, item QR image, and documentation. So what do I do? I just click item button, that's it? Sure, click on item button, because you're going to put this on your website, okay. so let's, let's go there. There it is. Can you see that? Is that big enough, Ed? Uh, can you read that? Okay, cool. So now I'm on shopping cart item. All right. This form will give me the, uh, the HTML code. Da, 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 da. Oh, I can't read too many words. Okay, merchant name. <laughs> okay, so that's got my name. Now I want item description. So, oh, and it wants a SKU code. So I'm going to put um, conference, um, conference admission. Mm -hmm. Should I say that? Okay, conference yeah, admission. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, item code, what do I need to put there? Do I need an item? That's only, is that uh, optional? No, you don't. If, if you have an inventory number or a SKU number, you can put that there. Um, it, it's not required. You can leave that blank. Okay. And you, then, need, you need one or the other. You need either a description or a code, one or the other. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then you set the price. So how, how much is it going to cost, Bruce? How much is it going to cost this to attend is, this conference? Uh, a thousand bitcoins. <laughs> no, unless you know somebody. No, wait, wait, first there's a type of product, virtual or physical. Well, because this is kind of like a ticket, I guess it's more virtual than physical because I'm not going to ship anything, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so I'll leave it on virtual. Item yep. price. Oh, and I can price it in bitcoins or dollars. Yes, well, you can. Yep. We, don't eat, we can't even think in dollars anymore. We think in bitcoin. <laughs> so what is the price going to be? I don't know. Well, let's just say for now one bitcoin. <laughs> one point zero 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 one. Um, okay, one Bitcoin. So I can just do one? That's it? Yeah. Shipping and yeah. handling, tax rate? Nah. That'll include the tax. Okay. Buyer's email. Okay, this is how BitPay collect buyer's email, full name, address, and telephone number. Hmm. 
Yeah. So this, yeah. So what this is, Bruce, is we allow the merchant to collect, you know, as little or as much information of the shopper as they can. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if you have to ship something to somebody, you got to collect their their address. Right. Um, you know, if you just want to collect their name and email address, you know, you can do that too. So we let you select the fields that you want uh, us to collect from the buyers on the shopping cart. Now, that's pretty I, awesome. If I check these fields, does it make the fields required or optional for the buyer? Uh, well, anything required. that you check will be required for required. the buyer. Required. So I, I, I can't tell them I want their address, but make it optional. It's like required or nothing. Right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. So, uh, well, I think I, ne I definitely need their a name and an email address. Um, Could know. you just require a country or a state? Because I'm not looking at the screen right now. Oh, it says yeah, add custom at, field. Well, at the, um, it, it, right below that, Bruce, do you see a button where it says add custom field? Yeah. Click that. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And oh, so and I can, can add anything are, I want. That's let, pretty let's sweet. Let's say you want to know, well, what, what company is this guy's with, right? So you can mm. ask him for a company name. You can ask for a country. So we give you a couple of custom fields. So if you want to do something that's not on those lists, um, you, can, you can add a custom field. I can say, com I can type in company name. Can you see me type in there? I, put, I can put in company name, parentheses, or uh, not applicable, like N slash A. Would that make sense? And I can make it required, but they could type in NA if there isn't one. Yeah. Ah, see, I, I tricked the system, so I can still make it optional. <laughs> Just yeah. tell them to type in NA if it's not. Yeah, actually, actually the, those fields, we're not, we do need to put a check mark on whether you want to enforce them uh, to, to put that in there, but uh, I think if they leave it blank right now, it's a, it'll still take their money. <laughs> oh, it'll still take their money. Oh, in that case, I want them all on. Then I'll just turn them on, and then if it's if it's optional, it's optional. That's cool. All right, let's yeah. we'll find out. All right, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. I can ch can I change these things later? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm not gonna worry too much. When you make a change changes. on a widget, is that gonna update to wherever the widget is placed? Yeah. The uh, the widget stored on the on bitpay.com. So. Uh, when they click the checkout button, they're going to get whatever you got stored. Okay. Current. Okay, cool. So I don't have to update the widget code or anything. Thank goodness. No. You guys are, you thought that through. Okay, cool. So shopping cart item. Oh, wait, what happened? I'm back on the same screen. Oh, it, I just have to scroll down more. Choose one or more ways to display this item. Small button HTML, large button HTML, QR web, or QR print. Okay. Oh, so, yeah, I, so I click the one I want, and then it'll give me the code I want. By the way, what's the difference between QR web and QR print? Uh, well, I'll click on it, and you can see one of them is, is, a, is a low resolution image that's designed for a website. Oh. Uh, the print is a much larger resolution that oh. you would use if you needed to actually print something. I got you. Okay, so yeah. they're just they're both images that I can right click save as. One's Absolutely. big, one's small. That's cool. Okay, yep. and now I want a large button or a small button. Oh, I think it should be a large button. Okay, yeah. so I got a large button, and I'm going to do, I, so what I just do is I cover over the code there, right click, and hit copy with the left button. Is this going to work? Unfortunately, I'm using Windows. Let's try Control A, Control C. That works. All right, now I'm going to go open another tab, right? Am I done? That's all I have to do? Yeah, now you just paste that wherever you want okay. that button to appear on your website. Okay, so I, I, opened, I went over to another tab where I've got my website. This is the Bitcoin Me site, and this is the actual uh, page. If you go to bitcoinconference.com, this is the page it's going to take you to. It's our bitcoinme.com site, which is kind of like the Bitcoin for Dummies um, site. And this is the page. It's, it's called Bitcoin Conference and Expo. So I'm just going to scroll down into this uh, text block and register now and all that. So uh, we're going to be updating that today. But in the meantime, I can just go ahead and plug this widget in. Oh, wait. You know, I think, um, I think what I need to do is add a new HTML block. That's what I'll do. I can go here. This is a free open source um, web, I mean, uh, you know, hosted web-based uh, uh, software called... Um, Concrete 5. It's super, super easy to use. So I'm going to add a block and I'm just going to tell it edit HTML. And then there we go. Now I'm just going to do Control V, which is just paste. And um, I think that's all I have to do. Oh, yeah, here I click update. And there it is. I hit add. And there it is. Okay, now I'm going to ed ed exit the edit mode. If you're watching live, you can actually go to bitcoinconference.com and see. 
at the bottom of the page, uh, there it is. Of course, I have to rearrange the text and stuff, yeah. but there's the button. All right. Pay now with Bitcoins, BitPay. So I can put the actual description of the item next to it, of course, pictures sure. of it or whatever. And then I just say pay now with Bitcoin. So I can describe this is an admission, click here. This is a vendor table, click there. And now I'm going to click it. Can I just go ahead and click it now? Is it, is it, will it matter that I'm logged in as, as me or do I, what will happen? No, it shouldn't matter the, the if, internet if, will if you're logged in as you. Dare I click it? Okay, I'm clicking it. Oh, there it is. I clicked it. And what did it do? It took me to another page called Only One TV Studios. Wow. The shopping cart accepts Bitcoin only. That's right. No PayPal. <laughs> you need a, can I put a logo that says PayPal with a big red circle and a slash through it? No PayPal, no Visa, no MasterCard accepted here. Take it and go to the bank and tell me what cash. Okay. So literally, I can just put in my email address. Oh my gosh. Oh, the browser did that. I was like, how did it know all of that information? Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I put in my email address and it automatically put in my name and address and everything out. That's the magic of the browser called Chrome. All right. And then it wants my company name. Well, it's, well I'm going to leave it blank because it's optional. Let's find out what happens. So I hit save changes. Oh, show prices in Bitcoin. So up in the top right. Um, Oh, I didn't scroll down far enough. Here it is. Up on the top right, I changed it to Bitcoin so I can see the prices displayed in Bitcoin because it's the only value window we understand. So I scroll all the way down and it says item and description, conference admission, 1.0000, only four decimal places? Um, Bitcoins. <laughs> we figured that was enough for most people. Yeah. Oh, and I can for change now. the quantity right here. Yeah, so let's say, let's say you want to let's say you want to buy 3 tickets, Bruce, so now you change the 1 to a 3 and hit update and mm -hmm. it'll update your shopping cart. Well, but I need 5. So I'm going to say 5 card update five. cart. Okay, and then it takes me back to the top, but I can scroll down. I think I can figure that out. What are these buttons up here by the way? Oh, email, print, save to favorites and share. Oh, yeah, that's so going to share this here's, item? Here's an idea, Bruce, and, and we talked a little bit about the QR codes and the point of sale, which is kind of a smaller market. The bigger market's more the internet, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But mm -hmm. let's say you are shopping around, and you're scanning items into your shopping cart, but you don't want to pay for it on your phone. You just want to save it and come back to it and pay for it later. Um, so you can email this, this shopping cart link to yourself or to a, to a friend and say, hey, buy this for me, and it'll email them the link to the, to the cart. So you don't have to buy it right now. You can email it to yourself and buy it from another computer or from another wallet. Oh, wall. I can email this item, to, like a catalog item, to myself or to someone else and then buy it later. That's yeah, handy. Yeah, you're emailing the whole yeah. part. You're emailing okay. the whole part. Yeah. Cool. And then, all right, so I scroll down and I see basically like it's an invoice. It's updated the cart to five items. Now the balance is five Bitcoin. There's no tax, shipping, and handling. It's all included. Total five. Now, um, let, let me see now. If I... Is there a way to, like, what if I email this to myself uh, or to somebody else? Say I email this, this page to Manny. Is it going to be in then his shopping cart? It's based on the cookie of who's logged in at the time, right? No, the link, the, the link is to a specific cart. So oh. if you email that link, it's to that specific cart. So it'll be the same cart. Oh, so if I email this link to somebody, they can actually add things to my cart? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. don't be careful who you email it to then. <laughs> right? Because yeah, they're, they're adding it to your cart. Well, either way, it actually doesn't matter much because you still got to pay for it. <laughs> we haven't done that yet. So, all right. So let's check. Can, can I check out now? Sure. Okay. So down here, check out with Bitcoins. You're only off for Bitcoins, right? Absolutely. Oh, yep. good. Okay. Because that's all we take to. All right. So now it says, please confirm that I'm a human. <laughs> Days. Do I need the period? I always wondered about that. And I wonder if it's case sensitive. That D. Okay. Love the CAPTCHA. Someday we'll, it's like the common cold, someday we'll cure the CAPTCHA. Okay, so I clicked uh, that I'm a human. This invoice is valid for 15 minutes only. 14 minutes and 52 seconds counting down. Oh, yeah, that's, that's to make sure the price is stable. Send bitcoins to this address. Pay from a computer or pay from a mobile phone. Oh my yep. gosh, this is cool. You just tell them how to do everything. All right, so let me look at this. <laughs> This is the invoice. You guys have done a better job than I even expected. This is really cool. I mean, anybody could figure that. Even I could figure this out. So, five Bitcoin, send Bitcoins to this address. We know what that is. 
Uh, we obviously know how to just copy and paste that. Just double click it. Oh, it even becomes a field. Mm -hmm. So you can, um, as soon as you double click it, it becomes a field. You can just hit Control C and copy it to your clipboard. Or I can do pay from a computer, pay from a mobile phone. All right. Um, it says open your Bitcoin wallet and verify you have at least six connections and a block count. Oh, you even tell the block count. That's smart because the first time, <laughs> remember the first time Manny came over and he, he was, um, we were trading Bitcoins and, and um, we couldn't figure out why the transaction wasn't, I'm going to embarrass you, why the transaction wasn't showing up and we we're like, oh my gosh, it was driving us nuts. We even posted in the forum. I asked all these tech guys, nobody could figure it out. Then finally, I, uh, I asked him, did you just install the app? Like he says, yeah, he had just installed the app when he came over. So yeah. obviously the block count wasn't there and it, it won't, your transactions yeah. will not show up if you don't have all the blocks downloaded yet, just so you know. That's new right. clients are going to warn you. We wanted that. to head off a, you know, a support situation there. In our testing, we found that, you know, mm -hmm. we discovered that. Because, number, you know, so that's why you made number one, make problems. sure you have the block count, right? And that obviously that's the, high, the block count right now. Make sure the clients downloaded at least uh, the latest blocks before you send a payment. Oh, you put it in bold, so this must have really come up. Okay. Oh yeah. Send, <laughs> click send coins. Uh, copy and paste the above to the pay to address in the amount of five. Send the coins. Yeah. You even show what the dialog is going to look like. That's cool. I've never used the Windows client, but uh, what you only use Ubuntu Linux around here. And then URI compatible invoice. Scan compatible Android wallets. Oh. Scan compatible iPhone, iPad yeah. wallets. Yeah, so Bruce, uh, when mm -hmm. we were talking the other day, if you have that, uh, that Android application yeah. where you click on, you know, send money, mm -hmm. um, it'll pop up the QR code, and if you scan this invoice, it will take the information from this and automatically populate the right fields on that Android client, and all you have to do is hit send. You don't have to copy and paste or type anything, and all you have to do is scan it. Oh, uh, awesome. okay. So this is the app in the Android market. I know we don't have a camera on it on my phone, but we have, this is the app in the Android market. It's called, it's just called Bitcoin, but it's by, what is it, uh, Bitcoin, what was the name of the uh, developer again? Uh, well, it's, it's Brian Armstrong is the developer, but the, the company that it's listed under is Bitcoin Android. Android, Android. okay. So in the, in the Android market, app market, it's called Bitcoin and it's by uh, Android Bitcoin? Or oh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Android. Android. Bitcoin Android. Yeah. So the company name shows up as Bitcoin Android and the app is called Bitcoin. That's specific because there's so many now. So you're saying if I click that little button, it takes me, oh, okay, no, that just takes me well, to that, the that just show, app. That just shows you what that client is, so that way oh. when you navigate through the market, you can identify it. Okay, so that, there, yeah, uh, that's the all you the have to market. do is if you, if you have that app already installed, is just I hit do. the send money button in the app. It'll activate the camera and the phone. You scan the QR that you see right there to the left, mm -hmm. and it'll take the information that we've embedded in that, that image and automatically populate the address where it's supposed to be, the amount where it's supposed to be, and all you do is click send. Okay, so, it, so you can really do it without typing anything in at all. That is so cool. All right, so I did, yeah, and by the way, this app is really cool. Um, yeah. So what, uh, and I, yeah, so if you, you know, if you get this far, you click on that and you'll see this, this is the Android market and it's called, Bit, the app is called Bitcoin and it's published by Bitcoin Android. That's the one. It's so cool. You yeah. just play with that app and you just go, it's like amazing what it'll do. All right, so what you're saying, I have that app installed. And uh, thanks to Tony the other day, I, I, I can't keep up with them all. And I hit send money on my app and it immediately brings up the camera and I'm just holding the camera up to the screen and there it is. It's got a pay to address, amount $5, memo optional. I can hit send. Wow. Your current payment exceeds your balance. Well, that not that the history of my life. <laughs> but aside from that, assuming you have five Bitcoins, that would work beautifully. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm going to have to actually then just copy this with my clipboard and uh, paste it into my, into my uh, Bitcoin app, but everybody knows how to do that. And then pay from a mobile phone is another tab. Oh, it just jumps you down. Okay. That's yeah. so cool. Actually, there's a little glitch on the website right now that Tony just figured out. Uh, those are actually supposed to be separate tabs, you know, the, the QR code and the instructions on the, uh, on the regular uh, client. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah, that'll be fixed as soon as we get off this conference here. There was a, something was out of order. So You know, um, I don't really mind it the way it is because I like that I can scroll down and see the whole thing without having to do tabs. I kind of like it like that. And actually, when you hit the tab, it just jumps you down to where you want to be anyway. I kind of like right. it the way it is. So, yeah, but it, it, should, it should swap out the two sets of instructions. So Yeah, I guess so. All right. Um, Are there any fees for using BitPay, either if you're a vendor or a user? 
Um, well, not from the user side, unless you want to add something to the to the transaction from the client. But again, a lot of the mobile clients don't support that. Um, so it's it's free for the, for the shopper. Um, you know, for the merchants, you know, our, our goal here is to make it as easy as possible. And you know, we look at Bitcoin really as an alternative to using credit cards over the internet because credit cards weren't designed for the internet. They have a lot of problems. Yeah. You know, they're designed more for a person-to-person -person transaction where you know you can check somebody's identity, for example, <laughs> uh, um, you know, and you collect a signature, which you can't do on the internet. So uh, there's a lot of problems with that. Um, so you know, we want to be a, a very easy to use payment system for merchants, um, where they have benefits of accepting bitcoins without any of the hassles of messing with the Bitcoin client. So our, we do fees for the merchant side less than what you would pay. Um, through a merchant solution for a credit card for a merchant account, um, they're less what you can pay for PayPal. So not only is it, you know, more merchant friendly from uh, a usability standpoint um, and a risk standpoint, uh, but it's also low. Cost. It's also what I missed the last line there. Also lower cost for the merchant. It lower cost them less yeah. than it would uh, to process a credit card or to process PayPal. So what, what did you? I missed that. I'm sorry. I was reading the chat room. What what is, what is the cost for a merchant? Did I miss that? Uh, well, it'll it'll be in the, it'll be in the high two percent range. High two percent. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's a, about what a credit card processing thing yeah, would little, cost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Credit, credit card between three three and a half. If you uh, you know, if you accept one of these new like rewards cards or points cards, mm -hmm. um, those are up into you know over three and a half percent now for the merchants, and those are the cards everybody uses. Right. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna be under three, and uh, so I, I think we I think we've got the most merchant friendly payment system out there. Uh, when you can put side by side credit cards, um, you know the risks and the ease of use of this uh, makes a lot of sense for merchants. Well, it is the risks, uh, and I love the video. By the way, the video on your site there uh, when you go to bit-pay.com because it explains one of the key benefits of Bitcoin itself. That's often not mentioned. It's often overlooked, and that is that. Um, the identity, you know, like you said, credit cards are pieces of plastic with bumpy numbers. They were designed to be laid down on a device and run over carbon copy paper. And yeah. that's so ancient technology. And uh, for physical stores, department stores started and all that. But um, with uh, electronic transactions, commerce over the web, because we have to use these old legacy technologies like credit cards, you have the identity problem. I can't buy something from a merchant unless I prove who I am. Yeah. Now, if I if I buy a hot, you know, whatever, if I buy a donut and a coffee from the, the food cart in the corner, I don't have to prove who I am because I pull out a 10 and he gives me back a five. I mean, that's how it works with cash. Bitcoin is a, has a really unique uh, cash-like, obviously, you know, a cash-like, uh, 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 what, fact or features, well, uh, right? So the fact that I'm buying online with a cash-like uh, substance <laughs> means that y you don't care who I am. Exactly. As long as you, you only care that you got the 10 and you give me back the 5 or whatever. You only care that I paid. If I paid cash, it doesn't really matter who I am. All you need is a shipping address. Maybe not even that if you're buying right. a, an electronic Yeah, and, and let's, say, let's say, for example, Bruce, that you're a website that sells digital content, right? Music, movies, download software, website access. You know, you don't have to ship the buyer anything, so why do you have to collect their address? Right. Um, so with bitcoins, it's actually faster for, for people to check out because they don't have to give their address. They don't have to give their expiration date. They don't have to give that three-digit code on the back. So mm -hmm. there's a lot less information that the buyers have to give. Uh, and then here's the other thing. you know, Credit cards have a big security risk because not only does the shopper have to give their account number, but you know, credit cards are designed as a pull transaction, so the business actually pulls money from your account. Mm -hmm. So the merchant has to secure all these account numbers, right. and there's a big risk of security breaches from that. I mean, you hear it every month. You know, some business you know get gets leaked out of you know millions of people's account numbers Sony, um, and credit card information. All it's, Imagine it's a huge all the hassle. companies that don't report um, that. I mean, so, so securing all these account numbers is a problem, and it, and it happens yeah. to do just with the fundamental design of credit cards being a pull transaction. Right. Yeah, um, credit cards are you know, absolutely and now, flawed now in so many ways. Bitcoins are different because they are a push transaction. The yeah. shopper actually pushes the money to the merchant. 
So it works yeah. like an email. You know, email is a push transaction. Yeah. A text message is a push transaction. Yeah. So it works like that. And you know, when you send an email or a text message, the person on the other end doesn't get your account login information. They don't get your account number. Yeah. Um, and so when we when you step back and look at it, you know, what is the most safest way to pay for something online? You know, mm -hmm. credit cards really are not at the top of the list. You know, right. when you look at Bitcoin, it really makes sense that Bitcoin should be the ideal payment method for conducting business over the internet. It is. It absolutely when, when is. You, sorry, you know what I was going to say. I'm sorry. Uh, is yeah, that, uh, the I difference? Just jump in. Oh, go ahead, Stephen. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to jump in here and say the way I like to sum it up is: if you look at technologies like the credit card, mm -hmm. and you look at ACH, mm -hmm. ACH was designed in 1972, mm -hmm. right? And credit cards even earlier than that. So these technologies were not designed for the internet. Bitcoin is the first currency that was designed for the internet. Right. Yeah. Or the internet. yeah exactly. Well, it's the here's U.S. A, here's a here's another thing, Bruce. You know, you look at um, you look at all the laws and regulations for credit cards. They were all designed in the 1960s as part of the Consumer Protection Act. And those laws basically are designed to protect you know number one the banks. Yeah. And number two the consumers. Uh, yeah. Both of which are at the expense of the merchant. So yeah. those all set up a whole dispute process, and right. you know, merchants are usually the ones that end up eating all the losses on disputes, and especially mm -hmm. over the internet where you can't check somebody's ID, you can't collect the signature, you mm -hmm. can't tell if the card is stolen. Yeah. So it's very risky for merchants to accept credit cards exactly. over the internet, and a lot of times end up you know, eating these chargebacks. I mean, I know as a merchant, I probably had 500 of these in the last 10 years. I yeah. have never a single dispute. That's Not right. One. I know Not that's true because I've been a merchant too. And you know, I, I, the Consumer Protection Act should have been called, like if it was named what it really is, it should have been the called the Bankers Protection Act, the, B the Bankers Protection and Legalized Shoplifting Act. That's what I would have yep. called it if it was like honest. That's right. And the way, the analogy I use between push transactions and pull transaction is imagine if you have a beautiful home and you just give everybody a key. Absolutely, everybody has a key and everybody can go duplicate a key. And when you get home, it's your job to throw out the people that are not invited. You know, or the opposite is when you, you have yourself or your, or your doorman or somebody answers the door and you invite people in specifically. I mean, that's, that's what it is. Basically, when you, have, you give out your credit card number, you're giving everybody the key to your bank account. And then yes. it's up to you then to say, hey, Get out of here. What are you doing in my bank account? You know, it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. The whole thing is designed to protect the bankers and to uh, basically, you know, make it easy to do shoplifting and, and abuse the merchants because that's where the money is in all the merchants. Yep. You know, they're making money. The people who are actually producing things of value, merchants and mm -hmm. small business, that's where all the money comes from. So, and, and it all benefits the bankers. So this is yep. different because this is cash. It's electronic yeah. cash, but it's still cash in a sense. I mean, in, yeah. in all of its features and functionality. So nobody, it, and, and also, the thing about Bitcoin is it protects everybody. Uh, credit cards, uh, everybody's at risk. The merchant is at risk of chargebacks Absolutely. and basically legalized uh, you know, shoplifting. And the, the consumer is at risk, whether they realize it or not, because the, uh, they're putting their whole identity out there of not only proving who they are, they have to prove who they are to the merchant and what they're buying and all that stuff. It's privacy, you know, and then it, financial yeah, privacy. Trust them. Exactly. All that. Tri but meanwhile, Bitcoin, all you ha all you put out there is an address. And the only thing you can do with it is send money to it. And that's it. You, did, you either paid or you didn't. And that's all you need to know. Like when we're selling, we're not selling virtual goods, but we're selling admission tickets to a conference. It's the same thing. We don't need to collect anything, really. All we need is right. like a name or a nickname so we know who to let in the door. That's all we really need. And so it's perfect. I mean, you can be anybody. And uh, as, all we need to know is, did you pay? And, you know, who are you? Uh, something to identify who you are. You know, it could be an, a receipt number, really. So yeah. Well, it could be a QR code on the receipt. That's right. right. There you go. Print it out. There you go. So yeah. once again, I've, I've done all the talking. We have like 60 seconds left. Is there any like one last line you want to leave us with? Uh, you know, I mean, I guess we just want to make the point that, you know, we, we've developed an automated process that can just make it as easy as possible for merchants. I mean, there's a lot of people out there excited about Bitcoins. They really like the idea. But they said, well, how do I accept this for my business? And, and it's, it's a very clunky and cumbersome process. And mm -hmm. so... Granted, you know, there's a lot of hurdles that Bitcoin needs to overcome, but this is one link in the chain that we really wanted to make uh, easy as possible for businesses to accept this. 
Um, and so, you know, whether you have a shopping cart or not, whether you just have a couple of items or, or a very large e-commerce site, uh, you know, with BitPay, you can accept Bitcoins as a form of payment on your website. Um, and we fully automated the process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you want to, you don't, you don't even need to see Bitcoins at all. If, if you want to just keep everything in dollars, you don't have to look under the hood. So you can enjoy all the benefits of accepting Bitcoins uh, without really knowing what the heck a Bitcoin is. You and don't have to see can get it. paid in dollars. That's perfect, yeah. perfect. I'm, I can tell you this, I am really impressed. I'm really impressed by the, by the thing. It's so easy. Even I can yeah. do it in yeah. just two seconds. I mean, literally, most of the time was just reading it to you. But that's super yeah. simple. But we're out of time. Out of time. We got ten seconds left. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, you guys. Right. Thanks, Tony Thank and Steve, you. for Thank joining you. us. Great right. party. Thank you, Bruce. We'll see you yeah. tomorrow, Bye. two p.m. Eastern, every weekday, the Bitcoin Show. Yeah. Bye. Bye.